Good morning. It's good to see each of you here this morning. And uh, it's a beautiful day out here, isn't it? It's going to get warm, but it's going to cool off. And sooner or later, we'll be longing for warm weather. As we gather, we want to welcome each of you here, those on Zoom or later on YouTube, for a time to spend in worship, in focus, and internal thinking. I was reading some words <coughs> from this past week, and if I have a, <coughs> a challenge in life, it's I read too much. And telephones and iPads make that so simple anymore. But we need to take time to think. And this week it just occurred to me again, where does God dwell? Does God dwell in the wood in this building? <clears throat> or does God dwell within the building of our own bodies? And I think if you read the book carefully enough, you'll find out God dwells within us. So we welcome each of you here this morning, and uh, we have some guests, special guests. We welcome you, and I'll let people guess who that is. <laughs> Art and Jenda, it's good to see you. As we travel this life, part of our experience is worth a word called forgetfulness. We give it a general term called dementia. But how do we handle this forgetfulness? And I'd like to ask a show of hands from anyone who has ever said, now what was I going to do? <laughs> yeah. My theory, I have one before we start actual worship. That comes from our memories getting full from life's lessons and life's experiences. Think about all the things that have gone into our bodies in terms of knowledge over time. It's amazing, isn't it? Well, sometimes that's what it is. We'll go on from there. We look forward to hearing from Janine on what her perspective is that comes from scripture on how do we deal and how do we support people in the throes of something God has allowed to happen in our lives. That's a big one, isn't it? Caregivers and the person experiencing it. It's a challenge. Yes. <clears throat> we'll try that. <clears throat> well, I know part of my problem, maybe I, I can't get close enough to it to talk right here. Okay, I'll slump. <laughs> That's Carol and Pauline's fault I got to this stage in life. Maybe that meant, I, that's probably the answer to my problem. Okay. Let's put all that aside now and we'll start. By the way, this was my dad's favorite psalm, uh, probably passage in the Bible, but I've, I've pulled verses from it. So I'll say that from the beginning. O Lord, you have searched me and known me. You know when I sit and when I rise, my entire life, everything I do. You understand my thought from afar. You scrutinize my path and my lying down. You have enclosed me behind and before, and you have placed your hand upon me. Such knowledge is too wonderful for me. It's too high above me. I cannot reach it. Where do I go from your spirit, or where can I flee from your presence? If I dwell in the remotest part of the sea, even there your hand will lead me, and your right hand will take hold of me. For you formed me, my innermost parts. You knit me together in my mother's womb. I give thanks and praise to you, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are your works, and my soul knows it very well. How precious also are your thoughts to me, O God. How vast is the sum of them. 
If I could count them, they would outnumber the sand. When I am awake, I am still with you. One of the miracles of faith and walking with Jesus. <clears throat> Let's pray together. Lord, as we gather today, we give praise and thanksgiving that we can gather. We know that you don't dwell here in this place in terms of wood and nails and plaster and paint, but you dwell here with the combination of the lives that are gathered to focus on you. Help us as we do that this day. In Jesus' name, amen. As a little more introduction to today, I'd just like to make a few comments before we share our music and our worship in song. Each one of us has experienced dementia in our lives. My mom, my mother-in-law, even my dad. Different cases, different reasons. Some places, or some in lives, drugs helped. In, in one life in particular, it was the woman sitting in here who was the only one who could communicate with her any longer. In terms of my mother and her challenges, there was a medication at the end of her life that she took that just opened her to her oldest son that was amazing. I got to know her in intimate ways that probably were something I really wanted to experience. So we th give thanks for that. And in my dad's case, I didn't know what was going on, and nor did anyone else for the longest time. He couldn't even talk, and it sounded like German. I always wanted to know if there was somebody who understood German, whether that's what it was, because I don't know. But they found out he had cryptococcal meningitis in the lining of his brain. They gave him medication, and it went away. So in each of our situations, there's both the disease, the cause, the whatever you want to say, but there's also the people who care for them. And how do we care for the caregiver? And I think that's going to be part of our focus today as well, as we unite together. Please join me in singing 495, Morning Has Broken. And I invite you to stand if you're able. And then we'll turn to 91. We praise thee, O God.
somebody to get me a glass of water. Do we have any volunteers? Thank you, Mark. We're going to have a children's time, and so I'm not going to come back to you, and you're not going to come up to me, but I want each of you to pretend that I'm not talking to anybody but you guys, okay? So just ignore the adults and they'll go away, okay? One of the things we're going to learn about today is when people are different. And do you know anybody in your life that seems a little bit different? There's lots of people that seem different, aren't there? Yeah, I uh, experienced that too, and we, we do that day to day. Hey, thank you very much. Now, where am I going to put it without knocking it over? And we experience people who are, who are just odd sometimes. We find people who are fun people, but they're a little bit different. So I thought today, for us young people, what would Jesus do? And I've said that before here. And told everybody else in the room, but I don't think I've told you that slogan came from my mom. Now, I, maybe the rest of you experienced that too, but that was one of my mom's favorite slogans as we were growing up. Well, what would Jesus do? And that stuck with me all 71 years. So, as we walk each day and we find people in our lives that are different. What would Jesus do? I've experienced that too, as I read in the Bible. And we're not going to pick out lots of passages. I'm probably not going to pick out any. But Jesus went to people who were different. Jesus went to people who were struggling. And Jesus went to people who didn't have a whole lot of problem at all, but yet they were human beings. And being humans, we all have challenges, don't we? So in my mind, in Jesus' mind, if I can say that, there wasn't anybody that was a whole lot different. They just had stuff. And it's this stuff that makes up our lives that makes us unique. And Jesus didn't back away at all from any of those situations, no matter how uncomfortable they got. I know that there are lots of words that Jesus told us that are hard to understand. And as we get older, we're going to understand more and more of them, hopefully. And hopefully, each one of us, now we're going to put the older people in with us, okay? Hopefully, each one of us who walks this path picks up more and more of what would Jesus do. And what would Jesus do for all of us? And how does that work? That's what we learn each day that we wake up and each night that we go to sleep, what Jesus would do. Let's pray together. Lord, we're thankful for young lives. We're thankful for what the future can hold for them, even in times that look tough. 
And we older people seem to think it's not ever been any worse, but you know, Lord, that's always been a challenge for you to speak to us because we don't listen. Guide us as we listen and as we grow in Jesus' name. I'd like to take a moment for a prayer for the offering and the gifts that we bring. Lord, as we gather, we think of our responsibilities. We think of the opportunity to share with others, both in terms of time, time here, time in Texas, time in Arizona, and time, period. It is a gift. Bless these gifts and those who have shared in Jesus' name. Amen. A holy time this week also occurred when Walter Good got to go home. And uh, just as a reminder, the candle burning this morning is in his memory. And I can say it now, maybe 50 years ago we couldn't, but it's in his honor too. And so let's just uh, give a moment of thanks for that life, shall we, together? Lord, we look to the past. We look to the present. We look to the future. We give you praise for people such as Walt, who followed your path. The influence he had on us, the walk that he had with you, we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen. That word praise occurs quite often, doesn't it? And it starts us out today. Praise the Lord, my soul. All my inmost being, praise his holy name. Praise the Lord, my soul, and forget not all his benefits who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases, who redeems your life from the pit and crowns you with love and compassion. The Lord is compassionate and gracious, slow to anger, abounding in love. He will not always accuse, nor will he harbor his anger forever. He does not treat us as our sins deserve or repay us according to our iniquities. For as high as the heavens are above the earth, so great is his love for those who fear him. As far as the east is from the west, so far has he removed our transgressions from us. As a father has compassion on his children and mother too, so the Lord has compassion on those who fear him. For he knows how we are formed. He remembers that we are dust. Let's pray together with Janine as she prepares to speak to us. Lord, we give thanks today that we can connect with people through a medium that you have helped us develop as people. It has lots of good things about it, and this is one of them, that we can hear from a person who is, has a message that we need to hear. Be with her as she speaks and fill her. In Jesus' name, amen. And Janine, I'd also invite you to introduce yourself a bit. Uh, I think I know a little bit about you from a long time ago, but I'm not positive on that because my memory doesn't work quite well anymore. So welcome. Thank you, Randy. And it's good to be with all of you today. Um, I have uh, just reached a milestone in my life. Uh, a week ago, I turned 60 and it was also the first day of my 30th year as campus pastor at Anabaptist Mennonite Biblical Seminary. So I greet you from AMBS and thank you for your long uh, support of the seminary. At the seminary, I do serve as campus pastor and I also um, am alumni director and I work in the admissions team and I teach a class every year and I'm also, um, part of the Doctor of Ministry program there. Um, just finished halfway through. I'm, um, it's a three-year program and I'm most of the way through the second year. 
So my life very much revolves around AMVS. Uh, my husband, Barry, and I live in Goshen. We have two adult children and two grandsons, one who is four and one who is five months old. So we are part of the 8th Street Mennonite Church in Goshen, and I bring you greetings from that group of sisters and brothers as well. A couple of months ago, my husband Barry, my dad, and I came through central Illinois on our way home from a family gathering in Iowa. We stopped just a few miles northwest of your church to find the Landis Cemetery between Tremont and Morton. And the Landis Cemetery is where my great, great grandparents, Johannes Kinsinger, and Barbara Wagler Kinsinger are buried. Now, none of us knew their story at all until last fall when I did some family history work. In December, Barry, my dad and I visited the house and farm in the Palatinate area of Germany where Johannes was born in 1815. And when we came through central Illinois, it seemed important to remember them by finding their graves. Remembering is important to me. I want to remember the people and places that have been part of my life journey. That becomes more important to me as some of those people and places are no longer present or have radically changed. My home church, Meadows Mennonite, closed in 2007. The retirement center there where my mom worked for 17 years now stands abandoned. The farm where I grew up south of Greenmont is only a field. All of the buildings and trees I loved so much are gone, erased by rows of corn with their much shallower roots. We went back this summer to remember. And we stopped at all the farms and schools and other places that were part of my dad's life. He grew up near Flanagan. As we drove around, I wrote down his stories so that we can preserve them, keep his memory. Remembering is important to me. And remembering is important to our faith. Scattered throughout scripture are calls to remember. Texts such as Deuteronomy 32 and Psalm 105 admonish the people to remember the days of old and to recite the salvation story, all the actions of God on their behalf. Remember that you were a slave in Egypt and the Lord your God redeemed you from there is the reason repeatedly given for why the people should follow God's commandments, especially in their care for the marginalized. There are calls to remember the wilderness wanderings, to remember the covenant with God, to remember our past alienation from God, and to remember the words of Jesus and the prophets. Jesus commanded us to observe the Lord's Supper in remembrance of him. Remembering God and God's activity appears to lie at the foundation of our faith. But sometimes remembering gets interrupted by dementia. Dementia refers to a variety of diseases and conditions, including Alzheimer's disease, in which nerve cells or neurons in the brain die or stop functioning normally. This affects memory, the ability to think clearly, executive functioning such as decision-making, behavior, and eventually the ability to carry out basic bodily functions, such as walking and swallowing. 
One of the helpful ways to understand dementia is outlined by seven words that all begin with the, the letter A. Now, not all of these might be experienced by one individual with dementia, but they are common symptoms. Amnesia is the symptom we think of first when we hear about dementia. Amnesia means loss of memory. In the early stages of dementia, short-term memory is affected and people not, might not be able to remember what was just said or recent events. As the disease progresses, more memory is lost. Typically, a person loses memory in the reverse order of gaining them. And it seems as if the person's age regresses. For example, a person with advanced dementia may think they are 25 and not recognize their spouse because they remember their spouse as a young adult. The second A is anisognosia which means that someone can't recognize that something has changed. The word literally means without knowledge of disease. If someone has anisognosia, they might deny that anything is wrong when others can see problems. As you might imagine, this can be very frustrating for caregivers who are trying to convince someone that they should no longer drive or that they need help with something. A third A is agnosia, which is not being able to recognize things, whether objects or people. This might affect any of the senses, but not necessarily all of them. A person with dementia might confuse objects and what they are used for. For example, putting salt in their lemonade and sugar on their potato. A fourth A is aphasia, which is losing the ability to use language. This might mean difficulty writing or speaking a complete thought or understanding what others are saying. As the disease progresses, the ability to speak may be more and more affected. A fifth A is apraxia, which is not being able to carry out purposeful movement. It becomes harder to do activities that require coordination, including simple tasks like tying shoelaces and more complicated tasks like driving. In advanced dementia, a person may not be able to move a leg forward when trying to walk. A sixth A is altered perception, which means someone misinterprets the information their senses are giving them. This can include the loss of depth perception, how far away a chair is or how high a step is. And a seventh A is apathy, which means not being able to take initiative someone else may have to give cues to get the person to start or continue in a task. Estimates vary, but experts report more than 7 million people ages 65 or older had dementia in 2020. If current demographic and health trends continue, more than 9 million Americans could have dementia by 2030 and nearly 12 million by 2040. As life expectancy lengthens and baby boomers age, the number of people affected by dementia is growing rapidly. As Randy said, most of you know someone who has experienced dementia. For some of you, that loved one has been a spouse or a parent that you helped care for. My mom was diagnosed with dementia in 2017. At first, it felt like we were in a race to preserve memories, making videotapes of her life story, 
documenting pictures and family heirlooms, gathering the youngest generation to hear her stories. Even as we were grateful for the things she still remembered, we mourned with her the frustration of sentences interrupted by lost thoughts, the loss of ability to plan, disorientation in matters of time, and moments of confusion or distorted memories. Dementia's changes lead to other losses, such as the independence of driving or living in one's own house, beloved activities such as volunteer work, and often the gradual shrinking of one's circle of friends. As my mom's disease progressed, the confusion grew. Safety became a bigger concern as she escaped the apartment or tried to use the stove. Mom moved into nursing care in October 2019 and had a fall in January 2020 that confined her to a wheelchair the rest of her life. Then came the pandemic and for many months we could not communicate with her other than standing outside her window and shouting to her. When we were finally allowed to be with her again, she could barely communicate. She died in February 2022, but in many ways it felt like we lost her gradually. Our family's journey prompted me to reevaluate the way we define personhood and faith. Our culture emphasizes rational thought as the essence of our personhood. I think, therefore I am. Often we view faith as belief or the ability to articulate belief. And as noted earlier, many scripture passages stress the importance of remembering. If we lose the ability to articulate thoughts, as gradually happens with dementia, or if we are no longer able to remember, do we also lose our very personhood? Do we lose our faith? No. The essence of our personhood and our faith is not our ability to remember. We are beloved children of God, not because we remember God, but because God remembers us. The theme of God remembering occurs frequently throughout the Old Testament plus in the songs of Zechariah and Mary in the first chapter of Luke. God remembers the covenant. God remembers steadfast love and mercy. God remembers that humans are created and are finite. The familiar verse we heard earlier, Psalm 103:14, proclaims that God knows how we were made. God remembers that we are dust. Several scriptures compare God's memory to a mother's never ending affection for her child. For example, Isaiah 49 verses 15 and 16. Can a woman forget her nursing child or show no compassion for the child of her womb? Even these may forget, yet I will not forget you. See, I have inscribed you on the palms of my hands. So deep is this awareness of the remembering character of God that over 30 passages in the Old Testament include a call for God to remember. Many of these pleas come from a situation of distress. For example, Hannah in her distress prayed that God would remember her and give her a child. Another example is Psalm 25, 
which David prayed when he was threatened by his enemies. This passionate and beautiful prayer can be a powerful resource for those with dementia. I'd like to read it now, replacing the word enemy with the word dementia. Psalm 25. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, in you I trust. Do not let me be put to shame. Do not let my dementia exult over me. Make me to know your ways, O Lord. Teach me your paths. Lead me in your truth and teach me, for you are the God of my salvation. For you I wait all day long. Be mindful of your mercy, O Lord, and of your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Do not remember the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for your goodness sake, O Lord. Turn to me and be gracious to me, for I am lonely and afflicted. Relieve the troubles of my heart and bring me out of my distress. Consider my affliction and my trouble and forgive all my sins. O oh, guard my life and deliver me. Do not let me be put to shame, for I take refuge in you. May integrity and uprightness preserve me, for I wait for you. For those suffering from dementia, perhaps remember me is the most essential prayer that can be uttered. In the face of dementia, the longing is to be remembered by God and by others. How can the church respond to this plea? We can provide physical demonstration of remembering, such as continuing to visit and include people with dementia. We can trigger their long-term memories through familiar objects or activities, such as the smell and taste of a warm loaf of bread, or through singing heart songs and reciting well-known scriptures that evoke their foundational memories. We can answer the prayer, remember me, by joining in the story of a person with dementia, wherever it has taken them that day. Jolene Brackey says, no matter how hard we try, we cannot bring back their short-term memory. We can, however, take hold of their long-term memory and use it to create moments of joy." End of quote. That means giving answers that make sense to them and learning more about the reality they are living rather than correcting them or arguing with them. And when it becomes difficult for them to speak an entire sentence, we can shift our conversation style to ask questions that can be answered with yes or no. The church can also remember those with dementia by providing respite or support groups for their caregivers and by including prayer reminders to remember those who are unable to worship with us along with a listing of their names. Because our deepest fears include the fear of being abandoned, one of the most important things we can offer is the promise of presence we will remain with you. We will offer you the face of God and continue to see who you are in Christ. As Mennonite theologian Harry Hubner wrote as he reflected on his mother's journey with dementia, in Christ, our identity can only be found, not lost. In Christ, our identity can only be found, not lost. My hope today is that you will remember this, 
the God who created you will always remember you, love you, and hold you in God's care. These words from Isaiah 46, verses 3 to 4, express this so well. Listen to me, you who have been born by me from your birth, carried from the womb. Even to your old age, I am your savior. Even when you turn gray, I will carry you. I have made and I will bear, I will carry, and I will save. Thanks be to God, who always remembers us. Amen. Thank you, Janine. This is a very familiar tune, um, Finlandia, Be Still My Soul, but is rewritten with some new words today that are very, very fitting for today's theme. depth of what we just sang and it occurred to me as I was listening and, and uh, participating this morning that even in my mother's depth of despair and agony when she would awaken from those episodes her faith was just as it was before that was a miracle and I it just came to me this morning of how that Maybe a fitting verse. Yes. 
sheet. Yep, it's there. That kind of ties this all together is this one. From Romans 8, let's share together. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Romans 8, 38 and 39. For our sending song, please turn to 605 and stand if you are able. This one's a bit more familiar. My life flows on. You may be seated. That was a joke. I'm, that, that was off the wall. But hey, you asked me to do this. As a uh, benediction, I've chosen a couple verses from the ending of the Psalm 139. Um, and you may be, remain seated. And then uh, Sarah's going to have a short uh, announcement leading into uh, a question we need to answer as a congregation together. And uh, she'll dismiss you then. Search me, O God, and know my heart. Test me and know my anxious thoughts. And see if there's any wicked or hurtful way in me. And lead me in the everlasting way. Sarah. 
as you heard um, from me about three weeks ago, um, the board received a recommendation from the Pastoral Search Committee um, to call Marion Agley as quarter time pastor for pastoral care in our congregation. And you've seen a little more detailed announcements that's come out with the midweek um, newsletter and with the bulletins um, that have been emailed and postal mailed to you. So the question before us today is we're asking you to affirm Marion as a quarter time pastor for pastoral care in our congregation. Um, her focus of ministry will be pastoral care and outreach in the community. She has contacts at the hospital and through the daycare where she um, takes care of little ones. And then the second question is we need to amend our budget, the pastoral line items to include compensation for that. And the amount will not exceed 13,900 and will likely be less than that. So um, Kurt's gonna pass ballots out. Um, and after you finish marking them, be sure that um, you get them either to me or to Bob Bethelberger. I threatened to make a joke, and I guess I will anyway. Um, I have a cousin, Eugene Slagle. He's from Oklahoma, but he now lives in Kitchener. And Eugene would stand up here and tell you if he were at Mannheim Mennonite Church, he'd say, you know what to do, so do it. <laughs> it's just the way he is. He's a unique person. Um, so mark your ballots, and thank you so much for your consideration and your patience as the search committee has worked through this whole process and um, we will let you know what the results are of your affirmation vote. Thanks.